Welcome to Swarf and Chips. Coming up on today's show, Mark is at the AMRC with Tony Pennington, the Managing Director of Ceratizic UK, talking about the evolution of aerospace manufacturing. Paul and Gio are at the Trump Open House, etching, bending, punching, hopefully not one another. Mark visits Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence as they launch a brand new product that calibrates your existing CMM, an essential piece of equipment if you produce complex and multiple parts. Colin gives us a cycle time challenge, including squirrel chasing. <laughs> and Paul is at John Hyde Engineering. How many Mazaks was that again? All coming up on today's show. Thanks, guys. Um, I'm here with Tony Pennington, uh, the MD Ceratizic Group. Tony, we're at the AMRC. What's your involvement with the AMRC? Uh, good morning, Mark. We are tier one members of the AMRC, have been for the last 14, 15 months. Uh, this week, we've got a two-day aerospace workshop. Uh, we've got uh, 14 different countries represented with 45 uh, people flying in this week for, uh, for the aerospace workshop. And what benefit does it give them? What do they take away from these events? Uh, it's very important. We've had Stuart Dawson, Chief Technical Officer from the AMRC, give a, a, a guest speaker presentation this morning, looking at future trends for aerospace, the types of materials we're going to be machining, uh, the trends for aerospace with electrification and other things. So it gives us, a, whilst we've already got industry leading products for aerospace today for customers to give solutions, it gives us an opportunity to look forward. For those UK engineers that may not know the Ceratizic Group, what makes you a little bit different? Uh, Ceratizic Group in the UK and Ireland, uh, we are uh, 62 employees, uh, 45 of which are time served engineers out there looking after customers day in, day out. Uh, extremely high service levels with the four brands that we have uh, within the group Ceratizic Cutting Solutions, WNT, Comet, and Clank. Uh, with extremely high service levels to support those customers. When you look at service levels, I see a lot of your vans and some of the guys, that's, some of the uh, end users that we, we see, you've got a lot of people on the road. Yeah, we've got a significant uh, team on the road, uh, backed by industry leading service levels, uh, where customers can order up until 6.30 at night, guaranteed before 12 noon next day delivery on 55,000 uh, products, egg stock available. And when, when you look at this event, obviously the aerospace sector is very, very buoyant still. Do you see that continuing for the UK market and the worldwide market? Yep, certainly. We just recently had the MAC exhibition. Uh, it was the best MAC exhibition I've known in the last 20 years. Uh, customers are very positive, especially the aerospace sector. So we expect uh, continued growth across all sectors, but especially the aerospace sector. Thanks, Tony. Well, that's uh, back to you guys. I would just say... Colin, do you really want to fly on an electric plane? So many engineers will know who WNT are. However, they've now been rebranded as the Ceratizit Group. So this must offer, inevitably, more tooling solutions for the UK. Well, it does, um, to answer your question. However, this event is very much about bringing the whole group together. So that's WNT, Clank and Comet group so uh, all under the Ceratizic branding and they do a number of these different seminars bringing a lot of, lot of their team members together talking about innovations this one's about aerospace and um, as Tony says uh, their first uh, tier partners with the AMRC you couldn't get a better place in the UK um, probably in Europe to, yeah. to have an event like this. How did you feel walking into the AMRC? Well every time I go into the AMRC I'm totally inadequate I do not have a PhD <laughs> and most of those guys do they're incredible talented people. Do you feel like that when you walk into the studio here? Certainly not. No. <laughs> <laughs> right your thoughts Gio? Uh, their growth is certainly a, a sign of their success and I believe you know over the last few years they're, they're a solution provider they're partners with establishments like the AMRC and also I think which is imper imperative is, is the research and development you know they're looking to the future so they've got solutions for now and in the future and you know with the new and the evolution of aerospace and the products and the windowless planes oh um, you know there's lots to look forward to. Just a quick one who's mm. likely to go to an event like this? Well, it's, it's mainly the whole group themselves it's okay. actually picking uh, the best place to, to actually pick a sector 
and deliver it and obviously AMRC for the aerospace perfect. was perfect yeah okay so still to come Mark is at Hexagon MI and Colin is still chasing that squirrel somewhere <laughs> now Gio you visited the Trump for open house with Paul this week I certainly did Lindsay and it was absolutely fantastic it was one of the best open houses I've visited in a long time and they are really pioneers in what they do I'm not going to give everything away so let's watch the video Lee, has it been a good week for Trump this week? It's been fantastic. This has been the um, highest number of customers visiting um, on record for us. We've had over 250 customers visit um, and we're very, very surprised about the turnout this year. I think the change to the summer events, whereas in the past we used to do it around uh, March time when it was a little bit cold, um, it's much better to do it in the summer months and it's really, really turned out. I couldn't have been more happy with the results this year. And, and would you say, what has been the, the what? I know there's lots of new stuff, but what's the biggest highlight from, from your side? Uh, for me, I think the high-speed eco on the eight kilowatt fiber is something which has really been a game changer for Trump. We have the, the power of the eight kilowatt being able to cut up to 40 millimeter stainless steel, but then with the um, high-speed eco, we're having a 70% reduction in the usage of nitrogen. So really reducing customers' costs is one of the big highlights of the event. Cutting costs but increasing productivity. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for this week, Lee. It's been great. No problem. Thank you. Another incredible piece of technology behind us here. This is the True Punch 5000 S12. Geo, tell us quickly about this machine. This machine is fascinating, Paul. Um, I believe it just punched, but it does more than just punching. It's bending, profiling, tapping, engraving, watermarking, um, profiling, cutting, cutting, and, and it's automated and it gets rid of the remnants as well. It's just yeah, you can see the finished parts are going on the end uh, pallet and then the remnant is actually coming out of the back here. How fast is this machine? It's 1,600 punches per minute, dependent on the thickness of the material. Material isn't, um, the, the, the materials that it can do are not a problem. It's dependent on the pitch of the holes, etc., and the thickness of the material. So if you take this one here, everything that you can see on this part, all the holes, all the, those squares, all the bends, all the threads, everything has been done uh, on this machine. And incredibly, nine of these, plus four other parts on one sheet, has been done, I believe it's less than 10 minutes, incredible. It's, it's, it's absolutely remarkable and it really illustrates, you know, when you're making extremely high volume parts, can you make it in a more efficient way than this? Trumps are pioneers in what they are doing. Uh, years ago, you'd have had to use several different machines to actually get this finished part. Now it's done in one hit. We talk about one hit machining uh, on metal cutting, but metal forming as well um, here as we see at Trump. Uh, last point on this, that tool changer at the back, it's actually it's modular isn't it you've got there's got 22 tools on there often these machines have like a turret type tool changer but this is much better because the tools are at the back so they don't infringe on the working area so we go and see some more stuff definitely Paul let's go one of the new innovations on show here this week is what we have behind us here is this parts master which is working in conjunction with the lift master now the lift master basically loads sheet into the machine uh, but the parts master is where the finished parts or the finished sheet comes down this conveyor and then as you can see Lewis is here operating this and it's taking the parts off. Uh, this is automating the process and uh, this is making the companies more efficient and the key thing is to this parts master and the lift master is they can be integrated to most of the true laser trunk machines. We can keep the machine running, cut all the parts, cut the sheet, the machine then stacks it in a, in a tower and then once we're, once it's finished we can utilise labour to then deconstruct it, deconstruct it with the conveyor. David, the Truemark Station 5000, what is this machine doing? I mean, it's a marking machine, so we have um, a Truemark laser as well in this um, Truemark station. So it's a marking laser for every kind of material what you want to mark. You're giving away beautiful souvenirs uh, at yeah. the business card holders. Could we take one back to the Swarf and Chip show for a souvenir? For sure, you can have. Gio, what would you like to have on the cut holder? David, could we have... Uh, Lindsay, I it's just a souvenir it. from yes. the show. <laughs> give, 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 give me a cup. Oh my goodness. Oh, um, shall I tell everybody what this says? It says, 
Lindsay Knickers, that's warm and cheery. <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, that's where oh, they were. No. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why? Thanks, Jake. <laughs> Who went out and bought these? Did I put them on? Oh, my gosh. You a lot are a bunch of menaces. Here we go. That is just amazing. <laughs> yeah, shall I do the rest of the show in these? Does really support that? <laughs> So who went not, out and not got the these? Knickers, no. I'm not pregnant still, gents, you know. I'm not anyway. Anyway, right. Okay. Thanks, gents. That's very kind of you, very thoughtful. <laughs> who do I work with? Anyway, uh thanks, gents. There was a little bit of a confusion about your name, Lindsay, so apologies about that. Are you sure hence, you didn't? Hence that no. <laughs> <laughs> you are funny, you lot. Brilliant. Right, okay. It obviously <laughs> was a busy show. Um, how has Trump uh, evolved over the years, Gio? Well, from being at that show, I mean, they're pioneers in what they do, but they, they've evolved in lots of ways. So uh, mechanically, the products have got to a stage where they can't be um, get any better to a certain degree. So a lot of their efficiency <laughs> has come through their connectivity. So it, it, industry four. So this is really um, pushing them forward, changing the. It's a game changer for them as well as their new technologies on the machine with the the automation the, and the eight kilowatt laser um, and you know and the bright light line fibre laser. So there's different lasers for different applications. And I different can't solutions. get over about the thickness of the material yeah, that they're able mil. to cut. That's incredible. Yeah. Right, okay, so just encourage everyone to speak to Trump, really. Absolutely, and when you mention the thickness of the material, that's another real good point, really. We look at, uh, and we assume that these machines are just for sheet metal work, but when you're looking at 40 mil thickness, yeah. you know, some of these uh, machines are doing parts that, are being done on CNC machines, on CNC milling machines. Impressive. Certain applications could be done um, onto these and fully automated, and it could be a solution for other people that are not necessarily aware or familiar with these machines. So I think definitely check out the full video um, and, and comment. Yeah. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Still to come, Paul is giving us an introduction into next week's show from Germany, and he's visiting a company with more Mazaks than you can imagine. Now, Mark, you with Hexagon MI and talking about a new product launch. Tell us more. Well, Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence, they're great innovators of Metrology products. They're based at Silverstone for, for this. So they get a lot of uh, race car engineers that come and use the facilities. It's called the Swift Check, but rather than me speak any more, watch this video. Lindsay, I'm here at uh, Silverstone, the Innovation Centre, uh, Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence. I'm here with Mark. Now, Mark heads up um, aftermarket and developments, and they're launching a brand new product called the Swift Check. Now, Mark, what are the benefits of the Swift Check? Well, at Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence, we're always keen on giving the customer confidence in what they buy, confidence in what they maintain, and to give them that sort of extra self-sufficiency to be able to keep on top of the measurement capability and measurement uncertainty. So the idea of the swift check is periodically through the, uh, between the calibration periods or the service intervals, they can reintroduce the artifact and they can then verify that the machine is still optimized, it's still performing to the day it was calibrated. And there's no other factors that have come into effect that have made potentially the machine drift, such as maybe an operator incident uh, or an environmental drift within the room. And when you're buying uh, the solution that is here, I presume it's all backed up by software, is it? Yeah, so the, the, it's a package product. So we, we provide the hardware, which is the artifact itself. We've written the software in both of our main programming languages for the CMM, which is Quindos and PC Demos. Um, the programs uh, have been written to make it very easy with a, a nice easy front end interface. There's a number of things you can check, a number of four or five different type of characteristics of the machine you can check by just simply pushing a button, starting the measurement program, and then the program will do the rest. And for those engineers that may be interested in buying something like this to, to help calibrate their CMM, can it be used on other manufactured machines? Yeah, by all means. I mean, the, the artifact principle is not a new, new principle. The, the key thing here is the, the way that we have written the program to make it so its uh, uncertainty is taken out in the programming side and you've got confidence in the results. Uh, what, what it would mean to use it on a competitor's product or a, a, another software platform that's not a hexagon platform would mean that you would just have to get confidence in write a, an equivalent program in that programming language. And what's the cost? Uh, less than £4,000. 
So. And do you get support from uh, Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence for that as well? Yeah, I mean, obviously, when you buy anything from Hexagon, you get support for it. Uh, as, you're, as if you're an ongoing customer and, and, and you have your software uh, maintained, that all comes with support. And this obviously supports um, the ability to diagnose remotely. So if there's a query about the machine's performance, you can ring us up, talk to the engineers. If you've got an artifact, they can ask you to provide the data and they can do some offline diagnostics. And putting you on the spot, do you think it's going to be popular? I believe so. I mean, initial indications. We've done some research with some customers about the sort of the the, the market tolerance and, and who who sort of looking for these types of confidence uh, products, and uh, it's looking quite positive. Thanks, Mark. Well, back to you in the studio. It's all about measurement at Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence. So, Mark, why do you believe in this product so much? Well, the Swift Check is an essential product that if you're um, producing complex products. Uh, for customers and you want to check them, this can actually be used in between the service elements and it's less than four grand and you get all the support and software from Hexagon Manufacturing So worth contacting them, definitely. Gio? Well, I think that the, you, we've mentioned the complexity of the components and how they are becoming more complex, but also the tolerances are becoming that much tighter. Um, and hence, you know, to be able to calibrate that machine during the, 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 the span of it be between services yeah. is very important. And they're based obviously at Silverstone with F1 parts, so they are talking about very tight tolerances. Yeah, indeed, and obviously the machine tools are more sophisticated, so therefore, mm. you know, the parts are becoming more, you know, or harder to measure, but, you know, obviously having this product, fantastic. Perfect. Gio, I'm so sorry, but we're going to have to give you a taxi because Colin has been chasing a squirrel, <laughs> and hopefully in just a few moments, we're going to find him back in the studio. Guys, cycle time challenge. You know I love to change it up a bit. I'm in deepest, darkest Somerset. I've already been ambushed by a squad of squirrels, if that's the right collective now, I'm not sure, but anyway. What we're looking at today is actually a material. It's a real, well, it's a real tough nut to crack. Excuse the uh, squirrel-based pun. So let's go and find out what the engineers think about it. So Andy, I'm getting a bit of a theme about this material. The mystery, can you solve it for us? What is it? Well, this is, this is a material called Swedish iron. Uh, we've been manufacturing this part for 15 years, five years on a fixed head. Um, and a secondary operation uh, on another machine. Uh, then we were introduced 10 years ago to sliding head top technology, which at the time cut down our cycle times um, and helped us with our capacity issues that we had. Um, but during the, the, the last 10 years since we've been, been machining on uh, sliding heads, we've had experiences with, um, with swarf control. It is the worst material that you would ever come across. Uh, worse than copper, worse than cutting nylon, which, which I've heard various stories about. Yeah. Um, it is <laughs> It is. It is awful. Sorry, that, that's a technical term for you engineers out there. So, I mean, the, the component itself, relatively straightforward in engineering terms. Fe fairly simple component. I, I, if this was to be out of mild steel or brass or something like that, yeah. um, every man and his dog would be after the business. Yeah. Yeah, because of the nature of the material, it yeah. is a nightmare. Uh, you ask any of the guys around the area, they, 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 yeah. some of them have been talking about ending their lives, you know, for having to machine this. Uh, it's a little bit like uh, an armadillo, crunchy on the outside and gooey in the middle and uh, reasonably abrasive. Uh, it's not a nice material to turn, uh, very stringy, very swarthy, destroys the tools, uh, just horrible. Uh, it's rubbish, absolutely diabolical material to work with, it's full of absolute the worst type of material you could ever possibly wish for and it's just rubbish. We never work with it. Don't work with it. Basically it's very awkward material to do source, get delivered accurately and machine. Uh, guys on the machines have terrible problems with it. It's unreliable, it's inconsistent and it's very expensive for what it is. Emma, what do you think of it? Nothing that I could repeat on a camera. We, we have to be we have to be proactive and we have to look at ways of making the job um, better, better for us because at the same time the customer is looking for cost down at, all, at the same time as well. So, so you went out and you went to Citizen. They've given you a solution. Yeah, we were aware of the LFV technology that Citizen have introduced and what it can do. So we gave the the problem to Citizen. Uh, they they set it up um, up in Birmingham. We went and, and um, spent a day with them. Um, the, the results were amazing. Yeah. Um, don't, don't, don't tell anybody how much the savings were. Uh, okay, well they've got a guess, have they? They have, absolutely. <laughs> so that's it. So with this, the L20, it's got the LFB, massive cycle time reductions. We're not going to do specific times because you want to keep that under your hat. Okay. But back to studio, guys, we need to know how much percentage saving on this part there's been. 
Don't forget to put your guesses in the comments box below. Colin, it's safe to say they weren't quite content with the material. <laughs> Not happy. So three things to say. First yes. of all, LFE, absolute game changer for them. Second, squirrels, there is a reason for that. Stopped country lane, letting cars pass, an absolute haunt, scurry of squirrels scurry. ran past, very traumatic. Yes. And thirdly, can I have my pants back, please? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're mine now. Comfy, are they? Yeah, yeah. I hope they were they're clean. Small. Yeah, they were clean. Yeah, good. Once. Just check in. Oh. Oh dear, <laughs> oh no. Right, Mark, you asked Colin a question earlier about um, would he be happy to travel in an electric plane? What's your answer? Uh, two things. Will it be powerful enough to carry the mini bar? Because you have yeah. to. Yeah. And is the cable long enough? Oh dear. Uh, let's move on. Oh dear. <laughs> no question? No oh dear. Again, like I say, put your guesses in the comments box below. Now, we've got two videos coming up back to back where Paul is in Germany talking about next week's show and he's also at John Hyde Engineering. Guten Morgen, Wie geht's from here in Germany. Yeah, I'm not in the studio this week. That's because I'm over here uh, in Germany at the Kihung Open House. Not only here, I'm also travelling to Huachon, of which next week's show is going to be dedicated to in its entirety. Uh, Ward High Tech are the distributors, the agents for the Kihung range in the UK, as well as the Huachon machines. In fact, starting here today at Kihong, they've been supplying these machines, would you believe, for 12 years. Uh, they keep in stock three and four acts universal machining centers from them but there is a lot more to the range and a lot more available of which you're going to see uh, throughout the show next week and in fact this one behind me uh, here is the Kihung Trax machine uh, it's a superb uh, machine tool um, so that's it from me here in Germany uh, come back to watch the show next week because it will be dedicated as I say to this trip uh, Lindsay I hope you've enjoyed your present and yes it was all Geo's idea uh, if I were you I'd get him to wear them At MTD, we're very privileged to visit manufacturers throughout the UK and, in fact, Europe, uh, some of which uh, host the best production facilities. And today, the story is certainly no different. Jasper, John Hyde Engineering, this is some company. Can you give us a little bit of the background of the history of the business? Well, it's uh, a long story and perhaps one that I can't do justice to in this short time, but uh, I'm the fifth generation of the uh, Hyde family to be involved in the company. Uh, started uh, in uh, well, between 1901 and 1910 by Robert Hyde. <clears throat> and most recently, of course, my father, John Hyde, has been uh, responsible for running the company. Um, I've been here only for around a year now, although I remember playing and walking around the factory as a, as a toddler on uh, long weekends with my father working in the office. Uh, so my involvement with the company goes back much further. Yamazaki Mazak play, uh, played a massive part in, in the company's growth uh, over recent times. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the products that you have here from them and how that automation has, has helped? We mainly have large machining centres from Mazak uh, and of course the base machines themselves have uh, many features which are helping us uh, with our uh, um, automation, uh, tool changes, uh, ability to run unmanned um, and uh, deliver of course the maximum productivity. Um, but of course what we're doing here is linking machines together with uh, FMS systems, with Palatex. Uh, to enable us flexibility in terms of being able to load multiple jobs uh, and to uh, operate the machines in the most efficient manner over a longer period of time. And Jasper, how many how many uh, guys have you got here working for you? We've got 42 people currently working here, uh, which is an increase of uh, more than 50% in the last 18 months. So we've grown very strongly. Um, That's pretty incredible. That is, is some growth. And the end product, is it generally for the domestic market or are you, are you exporting or is product being exported too? Our direct customers are typically domestic, although of course the products go all around the world. Um, and we're you know, very uh, interested and, and uh, happy to, to hear that some of our products are being supplied to Facebook and to Google uh, as end users, which is quite a turnaround from the, the dirty old days of, uh, of, of British industry, isn't it? Well, well, that is the future. In terms of the, the economy, and um, we talk about uh, yeah, industry going forward, um, where is John Hyde Engineering? We've got Brexit just around the corner, uh, only less than a year away now that's going to happen. What do you think is going to happen in the next year or two? Well. Um, 
We don't know, of course, and uh, uh, all we can say is that we're confident that we're going to be able to work with whatever happens. And that's the message that we're hearing from our suppliers and from our customers. Uh, we'll make it work. Uh, there'll, be, there'll be some pluses and some minuses, but the end result is that we're confident we've got the, the capability, the skills, the workforce, the, uh, the equipment to have a successful business, whatever our politicians might decide. So you've briefly seen what's happening in next week's show and talking of briefs, Colin is now wearing the underwear. Underwear? Yes. Yeah, does my bum look big in these? <laughs> Always. <Yeah. laughs> oh dear. So it's going to be a great show next week. But just before we end the show, I just want to discuss this company. Because Mark, we met John High, didn't we, at the Mac show? Great ambassador for UK manufacturing, a true gent as well, as yes. you well know. Uh, but I think he mentioned that it had 14, 15 Mazet machines. Mm -hmm. But since they've brought in automation, 50% of their workforce has increased in 18 months. And that's basically the difference between creating jobs with automation, where some people look at it as that it will get rid of... There is, workforce. there is. There's a negative air about people creating automation and then losing jobs. But that the videos mean. that we've seen, often it is increasing... Everyone we see de more activity. It doesn't de-skill, does it? No. And this, and this video proves it. Or it gives people the opportunity to skill people to do the jobs they're trained for rather than just doing the basic Pushing jobs. Yeah. What's your excuse then? <laughs> <laughs> Have I done something to upset you two today? Yes. <laughs> I would like to say as well, Brexit, you mentioned Bre Brexit, you know, are there going to be issues? No, everybody adapts. You will mm. adapt to it. So don't worry about One it. One last thing. Uh, and when you look at this video as well, the size of the automation, the parts on the yes. automation cycle huge. are huge. Mm. You know, and, and that's you don't see that very often. And I think mm. they're a great example. Yeah, people think small components, don't they, automation? Yeah. Well, one and a half metre diameter? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you don't know, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, a successful company and they've got some great machines there too. So. Indeed. So thank you for watching today's Swarf and Chips. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We've got next week's show in Germany, which is going to be very, very exciting. What are you going to say? Bonus in the goodie bag, in the Swarf and Chips goodie bag. Why? Oh, oh use, dear. Use Snickers. We're going to have the most requests ever, aren't we? Yeah, I don't think we're going to. <laughs> yeah. anyway, anyway, sorry to her. As we always say at the end of the show, keep those spindles turning.